back to the shop. In this episode, I'm just going to have a little fun with this thing. Now, we've been doing a lot with the Shapoko. We've been doing some signs and some pictures and some things for uh, family and friends and etc. But in this one, I'm going to do something for me. I'm going to make myself a little sign on the Shapoko. We're going to use the new uh, CarbCo program. We're going to see if I can make something for myself that comes out nice. Let's get started. Okay, so as always, we locate the CarbCo icon and open it up. Actually, what I'm looking for, the file, because I've already done this. But we're going to go through and we're going to double check and make sure things are correct. So I'll open up some tool paths here. I'll go to each one of these tool paths individually and we'll see that things are where I want them. Checking tools, selection, um, checking how the what type of carb I've made just confirming that everything is correct again just checking double checking triple checking and making sure everything that I have on here is the way I want it checking your tools right there so I'm satisfied with that. Now I'm going to go to Save Tool Paths. And with this arrow that I'm clicking here, it sends the tool path over into the working section. So now I'm checking to see that the tools are in the proper order. On the bottom here, we enter a name for the tool path, this total job. And we will save the tool path once I get done typing with one finger because I'm a hunt and peck type typer not a whole handed typer we'll save that do I want to override it yes I do a lot of times I'll click that twice and say yes I want to override again just as a insurance policy we'll open up carbide motion connect to the cutter load the file actually we gotta initialize the machine first before I go ahead and initialize the machine though, I'm going to load my stock and we'll do that here. So the piece I made was too big for the setup, so we just moved that back. And then I put it in the wrong spot and it's still not right. <laughs> give it a try. Now we got it. Switches. So she no move. Alright y'all, here's a little example of initializing the machine, what it does. Basically initializing the machine is telling it all of the start points tells it where the back corner of the machine is and it also tells it where the front is based off of where the back points are. Also tells it left and right basically the same way and it is ready to go.
the jewel chain. Okay, y'all, and here is where you've seen me use these before. Lisa and I used them before. We're going to now switch to a quarter inch end mill, and it's got this little black collar on it. They come from Pawn CNC or PWN CNC, I'm not sure how they pronounce it. But the beauty of these is this. Alright? I already zeroed with this one. I zeroed X, Y, and Z. Now, when I take this out, you will see that the collar hits against the collet right there. We take the ant one out. We take the new, now the quarter inch. We put it in so that it rests up against this collet. Snug it up. And no need to re-zero. We're good to go. Tighten it up. I get my wrench on there. Tighten it up. Dust cover back on. Zinger. And say resume. Pretty cool. We get it out of there and I'll show you what we're going to do with it. So the idea for this is to either backlight it or put a uh, black backboard on it. And as you can see, I hope you can see, Get over here where I can look through the viewfinder. Flip it around so I can watch too. As you can see, you can see the light back here. Well, these are all cut through as well. I just have to suck the dust out of there. And the debate is, do we take the deer out and backlight the whole deer because it's prepared to come out, or do we leave the tabs in so that we can just see through like this crack up here on the top, up here on the top see if we can get some of the sawdust out of it so we can get a better representation. Hinkle is all the way through too. Let me get it cleaned up and we'll show you what we got. So the power sander, the belt sander, is way too aggressive for cleanup. All you saw me do was take off the tabs. There's still a little bit of remnants of one right there. But if you're working with MDF, you are much better off sanding it by hand. 
clean up. Get her just a little bit of a scratch to take the what I call fuzz or the hair off of it. And that is all you need. Super, super easy to work with. You're not making a piece of heirloom furniture out of MDF, that's for sure, but carving on a um, CNC machine, definitely the way to go. Do that with oak. I'm going to stick it in the window so you can get an idea of what I was talking about for the light passing through it. And then maybe I'll wait to cut it out till I see some comments in the uh, section below to tell me whether or not this portion should go bye-bye so that the light comes through. Let's turn it around and have a look. Start with this ugly mug and then we'll go to the picture. You tell me what you think, y'all. You think we should leave it or should we cut out the deer portion? Let me know in the comments below. Anyhow, hey, thanks for watching. I hope you got something out of this video. I hope you liked the video. Um, give me a like, subscribe if you haven't already done so. If you have, you don't need to hit that button again. But hammer the notification bell. And as always, folks, we'll catch you on the next one.